of Keith Smith. Everybody out there in podcast land, welcome back to the Dirty Balls podcast. I'm your host, Ethan Benfield, here as always with Alan and Jeremy. We got one less person today because Jennifer, well, didn't really have anything to say. So, you know, it's 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 a slow news week, really, if we're being honest. Um, before we get into what little bit we do have to talk about, uh, we can play our game that we always play, our review game. And this time we have a five-star review um, because this is a place that I like and I didn't want to give them any negative press. Well, before we start, I just want to say I hope you guys enjoyed the the beginning of the show before we actually came on the national anthem. That was sung last Tuesday. I don't know the group's name, but to me, that's probably the best national anthem I've ever heard in – LP Friends Stadium, besides the little blind girl that, that sang it, again, I think, last year. Yeah, that but, was a very good uh, anthem. And that just opens up for this week and our promotion is good. You know, we're not jumping ahead, but it's Armed Forces Week, Memorial Weekend. So hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. So back to you, Ethan. Okay, well, uh, this review comes from Rich Karstensen a local guide with 123 reviews and 561 photos. This guy really, really is a review kind of guy. And, uh, oh, by the way, I don't know if the lighting is better or worse. I got a thing that I'm using this time, so I I think I look all right, Um, as good as I can. You're still ugly. Yeah, anyway, this is a five-star review from 11 months ago, and it reads as follows. My first visit, and I was impressed. The place is clean, and there are several concessions for drinks and food. You can even get it delivered to your seat. There was a great crowd and a lot of energy. It took a while to get in because the lines were long. However, all the employees were very nice. Plenty of people around to help you find your seat if needed. It was a fun night, and I'll be returning again. Greenville. Jeremy? Tourist. Asheville was- Tourist. It was, it was Greenville. Interestingly uh, enough, we were just there. Really? Really. Yeah, I got to say, that that is one of my favorite uh, minor league stadiums to go to. Uh, one of my favorite stadiums, period. And if I'm a Yankees fan. Them, in there. If yeah. I was to rank them, it'd, it'd be my third favorite, probably. Yeah. I put them up there for me. They're up there with Asheville. Alan, know they are ranking it. for it. They're in the top ten. I just I don't know where I'd put them. I just know my top two. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> everything was 
for the most part, was just as good as it always is. We, you know, we always have good things to say about Greenville, and to that, nothing has really changed. Uh, still a friendly staff, still – I don't know if the food's still good because I didn't eat there this time. Uh, but, yeah, still everything everything about it was still just as good as it's ever been. So all of our previous reviews, just just listen to those and, and you'll know what Greenville's like. Uh, we won. I finally, I finally had, like, negative there, but it's not bad negative. And what was that? The, the player tickets, they put us on – yeah, the home side. The- but I think they do that for both teams. They that's that's thus the session yeah. for both, you know. But I think it is now. you know, again, it's it's not bad, but it, it, it could be better, you know. If if yeah. well, I don't I don't want to sit on the home side being a wave person, and two, like we were talking before we started the show, if you're not sitting under the the concourse or you know the covered part, they you cannot hear anything that they're saying over the microphone. And well, I guess I got three things because, and then once you're under there, they've got the music before, you know, when they first open the gates and you're, you know, doing your thing, the music is way too loud. I mean, you, when you're trying to order something or just talk to your buddies, you got to scream at each other, but almost like you're at a concert. Yeah, pretty much. But I mean, like I said, that, that's just nitpicking there, but I mean, I would like for them to fix the the audio so you can actually hear out out in the outfield and everything. But, but that's a really big deal. That really speaks to how good of a ballpark it is when when yeah. the biggest negatives that we do have are nitpicky things like that. Because oh, yeah. I mean, we're you know we're not like professional journalists or anything over here, but. We are people that review and critique things, so we got to try to find little things to be negative about, and it's kind of hard to do that in Greenville because, for the most part, they're really, really good. So we got to try to find something. So music's too loud. There you go. There's your something. Well, it's not really too loud during the game. It's just too loud before the game, and it's too loud up under the you know where the concessions are. Yeah. Yeah. True. We found a really good restaurant in downtown oh, yeah. Greenville before the game, and I want to personally recommend it to everybody when they're going recommend. to Greenville. If you like barbecue and, uh, you know, smoked, grilled type things like uh, in the barbecue uh, ballpark, um, we went to a place called Smoke on the Water. Uh, it was delicious. A, it was delicious. And it wasn't all that expensive, especially for yeah. how good it was. Well, me, Amy, and not this Ethan that you've seen on video, but my stepson, Ethan, we ate there. I had a beer, had a brisket chili, which was amazing. Well, it, a lot of people might think it's on the spicy side, but I love spicy, so it was amazing to me. Uh, and we paid just over 30, 30 some dollars. We paid like 30, 34, 35 dollars. Yeah, I had a half a rack of ribs with two sides and a beer, and I paid $23. Yeah, and anywhere else that'd have been like 40 bucks. Yeah. Easily. And what I really liked about the ribs, first off, they were as good as as good as you can expect ribs to be fall off the bone, tender, like everything you want in a good rib, it was. But what really put it over the top for me, and, 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 and I've never seen a restaurant do this, and I'm glad they do this, and I want more restaurants to start doing this. They, they have like six different kinds of sauce all just on the table, and then they bring the ribs out with no sauce on them, so you can put whatever sauce you want on there. You know, most restaurants, when you get ribs, they're like, okay, here are the sauces, pick one. They bring it all out to you, and you can you can put you know you, you put a little bit of each sauce on there if you want you know like you really you can really make your ribs unique and uh, and the sauces themselves are all really good and you get a little you get a little cornbread with uh, butter as uh, uh, as the as the bread oh, and appetizer thing and that's free. And one thing I don't know if it was just our waiter or if this is something that their whole wait staff does. But, you know, around the ballpark down there, around where the restaurant is, 
there's lots of bars. Well, after we got done eating and he brought us our checks, he was telling us what the, the drink specials are. You know, I don't think he knew them for that day, but he was telling us about all the different drinks and beers and stuff that the bars around had. You know, I thought that was a nice touch. Yes, and then our waiter was very, um, very nice. And if if you're if you're grumpy and hangry and haven't had anything to eat all day, it can come across as him being a little talkative and not leaving you alone. But he was very nice, funny, and uh, and kind of outgoing, personable kind of waiter. Yeah. So and that and that was that was nice. And another thing I liked about the restaurant, you know, if you're going down for a game, you get there a few hours early to eat, go ahead and park wherever you're going to park for the for the game because the restaurant is literally on the opposite, like just down the street, one on the same block as the ballpark. Right down from where – where did we go last time? Uh, Max. Max is – okay. We also That's went – and we sure. also did, before the game, go to Max. And uh, which is a, a, a bar and grill right next to the ballpark. And they had a crazy selection of beer. Like they had probably 30 different draft beers and then a whole nother list of bottles and cans. You know, it, it, they had so many different beers from around the Carolinas and from other places. Well, our food adventure, we went to Morganton and went to Mountain Burrito because I was not driving down 85 through Gaffney. So we just we took the back roads, and then now my my new favorite place to eat was afterwards, and I know it's been around for a while, but we just never been. We went to Twin Peaks, and it was delicious. I got a a giant bold rock, and they have advertisements to where they have the coldest beer around, and it was thirty. It was twenty nine degrees. They had little ice pellets in the it was so good. And um, the food was delicious. Jennifer and I both got the same cheeseburger because it had some kind of special bacon on it. Cheese fries, two drinks, my big ass beer. She got some apple turnovers for dessert and I got bourbon pecan pie. It was like 60 bucks. So, I mean, it was, and we got up this morning and, you know, the hotel was like, you know, we got a free buffet and I'm like I'm not even hungry because we ate it I think like 12 30 last night so and then there's a place 10 minutes from the ballpark called uh shit team barbecue yeah. or something like that that we were going to go to but it was after 10 o'clock so you had to order from the bar and it wasn't nowhere to sit but they had a huge selection of sauces too so we'll have to try that out next time we go. But like I said, I think it's called Home Team Barbecue or something like that. Potential future dining experience. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's I, a lot of stuff in Greenville to do. And I have a, a couple of I have a couple of notes together. from the previous homestand. And uh I can't remember which games that these all happened in, but I do remember there were a couple things that that uh, really grabbed my attention. Attention. Uh, at, uh, so in one game, a, a bit something kind of rare. It's not super rare, but it's something you don't see that often. Uh, we had somebody called out on an interference call uh, defensively, which was interesting. That was on Sunday, uh, your birthday. And it was a, a, a pop. A, a pop fly in foul territory, and um, our first baseman went over to catch it by, you know, was reaching over the dugout, and there were guys, Greensboro guys, I think it was Greensboro, standing on the dugout great. in his way and did not get all out of the way until the very last second as the ball was coming down. And well, well, we were sitting up there like, well, that's interference, isn't it? And, and then, like, 30 seconds later, they finally decided that they were going to they were going to yeah. call it. Well, and it was one of those things where it wasn't like the, the players were trying to interfere. It was they were trying to get out of the way of the ball, and he was trying to get to the ball. And them trying to get away from the ball kept him from being able to catch the ball, which he should have been able to catch. But yeah, that's pretty rare. I mean, most of the time you see interference called on the catcher. 
You know, we couldn't see it from where we were sitting because it was on the other side of the dugout. Uh, we also, um, Aaron Zavala had a very big two home run game and got some national attention uh, for that. I was at the one oh. game of the week that I wasn't at, uh, Saturday, the Christian concert. Yeah, I wasn't there either. I was selling candles. There's candle company. I got the first home run ball. Nice. I offered it to him Sunday, and he's like, no, it's okay. You got it. He's like, how did you get it? And I said, a kid ran out and got it, and I asked him if I could have it because that Friday I went to the card store and bought a pack of cards and pulled one of his cards out of a pack. So had him sign the ball and the card. All right. Uh, so something else, and this right here is, is I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I own a technicality get to check off something from my baseball game bingo. Ah. And that is the game being delayed due to an animal on the field. Where Think was about this? It, Think about it, Alan. Think about what this could possibly be. It was a cheetah. A cheetah on the field. And they had to delay the game to get this cheetah off the field. Nice. Okay. So, okay. Derek so, Cheetah. Yeah, Derek Cheetah. So, uh, as anybody that's been to, multi, to a lot of minor league baseball games will know, there's a group of traveling entertainers called the Zooper Stars. Or, or watched America's Got Talent. Or watched America's Got Talent. And they are uh, people with these uh, costumes of animals in sports attire, and they're all they're all puns. You know, there's Harry Canary. Uh, Derek Cheetah. Derek Cheetah uh, and, and uh, Tim T. Bull and others. And they do Latin performances at ball games. Uh, they have not yet done my suggestion of Quail Earnhardt. Uh, they'll have to, they'll have to, I'll have to send them some more emails for, for them to do Quail Earnhardt. Uh, so anyway, they had one of the things where uh, Derek Cheetah was doing you know, one of their little gimmicks out there. And then he decided to go to, to run off the field, but he ran down the first baseline instead of the third baseline. Now, on the third baseline, there's a tunnel that... No, you're opposite. No, they, he went down the first, on the first baseline. baseline. He went down he the first came, baseline. He came, he came onto the field on the first baseline. Yes, and but he tried to get the off the field on the first baseline because he couldn't. On the third because baseline. there's a tunnel on, on the, the third, third baseline, and there's no tunnel on the first baseline. We were sitting You're on the first confused. base side. He was on the other side of the field from us. Oh, that makes yeah, that I'm so third used base to, side. I'm so used to sitting right at third base that I just got that completely backwards. Yep. Anyway, there's a tunnel on our side that he could have gone through to get out of there. But instead, he goes down to the other side where there is no tunnel and, cli and has okay. to climb halfway up the wall in foul territory to try to get out. And they stopped the game and waited for him to get out. And it took him, it took him a while to get out. Like he was all the players just standing there watching. And the players were just standing there watching him. And what made it even funnier is when he he, he did like a little front flip across the um to, to get down to the really? little berm that goes down. He landed on that. And then like a hundred kids bad. all showed up and just dogpiled on top of him and wouldn't let him go. Like they they, they were all, like, usually these guys have, like, these handlers that go with them and be like, all right, so here's where we're going next. But this, this guy had to make his way through a sea of children to, uh, to, to, to get out of there. And th those kids were, were pretty aggressive. Pretty well, what was funny yeah. is he had to deflate himself to get over the wall <laughs> because it's, it's, a, it's a balloon back. costume. And he had to turn the fan off so it, it could deflate so he could get over. And then once he fell over... They just all dog him. It was, it was crazy. And I've only got one specific note that I made left. We told you guys this might be a short, this might be a slow news week, and and by golly, it is. I've only got one more note, and so that brings me to what something that isn't that funny, but but I thought it was. So I uh, I have a a bit of a a bit of a love hate relationship with vintage sports clothes 
So like I see these people on Instagram all the time that are wearing like 90s NASCAR t-shirts and stuff like that, that I know damn well have never watched a race in their life and only have the shirt because it looks cool and it's like niche and cool and vintage to wear old sports stuff now. And because of that, there are whole stores that are like cool, hip, millennial stores with like loud ass rap music playing and, and, and people walking around buying like old 94 Dale Earnhardt t-shirts for like $50, even though they're like $5 if you go to the race and look at the tents. Anyway, I was at one of those stores today and I saw two crawdads things. One was a t-shirt that looked pretty cool that I really wanted to buy, but it was pretty expensive. The other was an old snapback hat with the old logo on it. And the tag said 1980s Hickory Crawdads hat. 80s? The Hickory Crawdads, which began playing in 1993, there was a hat with a tag that said 80s Crawdad hat. Wow. wow. So not must only, have been that guy. Not oh, only are the people wearing these vintage uh, things not doing their research, the people selling them aren't even doing the research. Well, did you confront them about it? No, I did not. I, 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 the, guy, the, the, the salesperson in the store was very nice, and I didn't want to be a dick about something that's something that trivial. But, but, but actually, that I should have because, like, you know, when you, when you watch like when you watch like Pawn Stars or something, and the guy's like, I don't know if this is legit. Let me call my buddy. He knows. I could have been that guy's. I could have been the buddy that comes in and authenticizes stuff. That could have been me. But, <laughs> but no, nah, I, I, I guess I missed my opportunity to make some. Uh, to make, but I can make some money on the side because I got a bunch of old NASCAR stuff that I could sell for like seventy, for like seven hundred percent profit, and still have these people thinking they're getting a deal. Yeah. Okay. Well, the notes that I have for last week, um, Acuna got his first home run. On, hey, when you said Tuesday. it right. I, I know how to say his name. Oh, yeah. Oh, you do, but people whose job it is to announce names don't know it. Oh, holy crap. Yeah. They were calling Avery the other night. We were watching, I think, Adam. We were watching the Frisco game. Avery was pitching, and it was, they were, it was just some other name. It wasn't Avery. It was just, oh, Jeff yeah. was getting pissed. But I'm there's, like, how no, do that? there's no excuse to pronounce a name wrong. When a person with the same last name is on the defending Thanks world championship it. team and is like pretty famous, yeah. But we and it's like uh, the other week in Winston. Now, granted, I could I could understand him not knowing how to pronounce the name Franier, but he was calling him Frank. I'm sorry, Franier looks nothing, sounds nothing like Frank, right? Maybe. And uh, they were Christian and Noah. They were pronouncing him on Wednesday night in Greenville. They were pronouncing him uh, Inoa, not Inoa, Inoa, or Inoa. And see, I remember they had the the paper here in Hickory, but they don't do it no more. Imagine that. You know, they would have the lineup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they would have the lineup on for us. And on the backside for the other team, and they have the pronunciation on the bottom, and it mm -hmm. says it sounds like, you know, because yeah. that's how. Well, yeah, Chris but also in Spanish, there are two ends. There's a regular end, and then an end with with that little thing on top of it. That's called a tilde. It's two different letters that are pronounced two different ways. And this is not. I'm no expert. This is like eighth grade Spanish. Yeah, it's, awesome. it, it's, it's all good. And let's see, going back, like I said, Tuesday, you know, it's time for the the the, the BS that we have to put up with at the Crawdad Stadium, but hopefully it's changing. Tuesday, I got a chicken quesadilla from the uh, cassette from the cafe, and it took 20 minutes to make a chicken quesadilla. And yeah. I was not happy, and this dollar dog you know, dollar dog Tuesday and everything. 
And I don't eat hot dogs, so that's why I got my chicken quesadilla. But I'm standing over there waiting and waiting and waiting. And this guy comes up, waiting on your hot dog? It's like, no. Nah. I said, I got a chicken quesadilla. He's like, oh, fancy. And I'm like, yeah. I said, all they got to do is melt some cheese. And he's like, I know it's taking forever. And he's complaining about the lines being long. Come to find out, he's also a vendor of one of the beers at the stadium. And he's complaining about it's taking way too long to serve his beer that he doesn't understand why we got such long lines. So now we have a vendor bitching and complaining along with us fans as well. So that takes us to the next day, Wednesday. We got Jennifer and I went up there and got us something else to eat. And I ordered my food as soon as the national anthem was over, 30 minutes. Because we have a chicken sandwich now that I had no idea we got. And, you know, I figured I'd give it a shot. It came out cold and dry. And when the lady comes out and says, you know, what the order is, she's like, chicken tenders. Chicken tenders. And it goes back in. She says it twice. Oh, like 300 people are standing around talking, making noise. And, right. And she's just whispering. And and they, they, they yell it out twice, and if you don't show up, they go back in. And I'm just like, this is some bullshit. And so I got down to my seat. I took a picture. I tweeted it, said, 30 minutes later, cold and dry, hashtag not happy. Scott also but, was having an issue that same night waiting on uh, on some food. That same time. Yeah. yeah. You know, he was waiting with us because he was trying to hear for me. And – um. So I don't know his name. I have his business card. He's the manager over the concession stands. He came down. He's like, who ordered the chicken sandwich? And I'm like, I did. And he's like, what was wrong? And I told him. He's like, well, what can I do to make it better? And I'm like, nothing. I said, not right now. And he's like, well, next time you get anything, here's my name. Here's my number. Call me and we'll make it right. I'm like, okay. He's like, but what can we do? He's like, I appreciate you putting it out there, bring it to our attention. And I said, okay. I said, well, here's the thing. I said, you know, it's slow. I said, it's got to get quicker. I said, because if somebody comes in the stadium, the second time they go into these uh, weights, they're not going to come back a third time. Because they'll, they'll probably chalk up the first visit, you know, as it's being busy. You know, you, you got to. You just can't expect it to be, boom, I ordered it, here's my food. But when you wait 30 minutes, and so then your second time, you wait 30 minutes, yeah, there's not going to be a third. And I said, and I told him, you know, about the, you know, the woman coming out being very quiet. And I said, now listen, I said, if I ordered a chicken quesadilla, the next three people behind me ordered one, and we're all waiting 30 minutes, and she comes out saying chicken quesadilla, the third person in line is like, oh, that's mine. And they're going to go grab that food when technically it was mine because I was the first one. They don't know. You know what I'm saying? I said, so there's got to be some kind of thing there. So he came back down. He said, all right, we talked about it. This is what we're going to start doing. We're going to start taking your names and we're going to start calling your name out over uh, a radio system. So they're going to get like a megaphone and all this good stuff. We'll see. You know, I haven't been back because, I mean, I'm not. If we're there six days a week, that's it gets expensive. I'll just run yeah. over to Taco Bell since the taco pizza's back. And um, you know, eat before the game. But I will go back to see if there's any changes, but I'm not gonna call him and let him know that hey, I'm coming to get my food. We're just gonna see what happens. And I don't expect them to give me free food anyway. I mean, it's it's no big deal. So, but but that's my my complaints for this week, you know, the same that we've had every other week. And that's the big – well, and the other big news, we played Greensboro. So, who came to town to play us? Claudio! Claudio! Oh. So Claudio! Was cool. um, his parents actually have <laughs> came he, – he actually got engaged a couple weeks before coming here. I think it was the week before because oh. he, came in, he came in batting 500. I can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me? 
You say something, Ethan. I barely. I think we're losing Jeremy because his, I, his uh, picture is all froze up too. Yeah, he's froze. All right. Well, are you are you back? I'm back. Okay. okay. All right. I am here. So, but yeah, Claudio got engaged in Greensboro um, on the field. So that was pretty cool. Jennifer found a, a video and shared it with the group. And when he got there, after the first game, you know, we all yelled Claudio. He was over there talking to his, his people and everything. He's like, these are my parents. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. And they were awful quiet um, Tuesday and Wednesday. But Thursday came, and Dad had a couple of drinks. And Dad was getting into it. Um I forgot where they were, but I went over there and talked to his fiance and let her know what was going on, why we cheer for him and everything from last year. And she said that this is the very first time that they've ever seen him play. And wow. So, yeah. I mean, I couldn't even imagine, you know, Lucas or Cooper, you know, go off. They make, you know, professionally, and I don't get to see that. I mean, that sucks. And then that goes back to, you know, here in Hickory, the, the, the big bitching complaint. No audio, no video for these guys, for their families yeah. to see it. I'm, it. It sucks to watch a ball pop up on an app, and that's all you see. Hey, and I read what happens. That's right. I talked to people. It, it's just, no, nothing ever came of it. But they were super – like I said, his dad was – Awesome. He couldn't speak English except for one, two, three, go home. Because he was making fun of us counting the steps. And then he would tell all of us to go home. And one guy's like, he, they are home. Because he was the Dominican father figure for Greensboro. And so he takes care of those yeah. guys that don't speak English that much. And he was telling us what was going on. And he was like, they are home. He's like, no. Go home, home. We had another uh, interaction with our 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 friend in uh, Greenville, their their catcher. Yeah, okay. Jax. Uh, he was he was coming out before the game, and uh, Glenn, who used to drive the bus for the Crawdads, he was at the game with us, and uh, he picked up Ethan's cowbell and started you know kind of ringing it a little bit. And, as Jax was walking by, and he stopped and looked at us. He goes, are you serious? Did you really bring the cowbells? <laughs> we all picked up our cowbells and rang them, and I said, don't leave home without them. <laughs> nice. He just kind of laughed. Well, well, I tweeted, you know, we tweeted him and said, you know, we talked about it, so we'll see. So uh, I don't have really that much more to talk about. I know it's a very slow week, but some, some weeks are like that. Jeremy might have something, and there's promotions. I know this is super unprofessional of the host, but I really, really have to go to the bathroom right now. I will see you just a moment. <laughs> but back to the Claudio thing. Let me go ahead and finish that, wrap that up. Um, Tim actually got a ball from one of the, from the, one of the pitchers. They put a ball, and um, right. on the whole sweet spot, on one side, we put 108, go home, and we all signed it and went over and gave right. it to him. Dude, you would have thought we gave him a million dollars. He told really? every single player that came out all, out of the Greensboro dugout, look, look, look. I mean, he was so happy that we gave him that ball. He was, you know, <laughs> that was awesome. And, I, and I'm so glad oh. that they got to see him play. And I think every game yeah. that Bobby played in, they won. Yeah. You know, he, he didn't um, do all that much, but the games that he played in. I think they won the last one he played in. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, won, he, they won Sunday. They won, They they beat us three to four. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But, the, uh, first game, I think the first game, I think he played in. Yeah, because the first game he played, the way he won four to seven. And. Yeah. He had a great game in the field that day. It was like everything that came to him, he just sucked mm -hmm. it up. I mean, just 
and it, it cracked me up because before the game, you know, when he was when they introduced him, we all did the Claudio, you know, and uh, when he came over there to play third, we did it again. And he's kind of looked at us, you know, kind of, you know, kind of grinned a little bit and shook his head. Well, then um, I forget who it was. It might have been Franier, I believe, hit just a, a shot down the third base line, and he just ate it up and threw Franier out at first. They looked over there at us and just went, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> and that cracked us all up. And he did that a couple of times. And uh, I think it was Friday night. Yeah, it was because uh, we had fireworks. One of the Greensboro players, somebody I didn't know, came running up to my stepson and my girlfriend and handed them a ball or handed you know, little Ethan a ball. And then uh, he just was like, here, kid. He got his ball and ran off. And then uh, Claudio was coming, like, you know, 20 feet, 30 feet behind him. And uh, Amy got Claudio to come over and sign the ball. And Claudio was just like, wow, I can't believe, you know, you're asking for my autograph. This is so awesome. You know, he, he, he didn't say that, but he just had, he was like, really? Wow. I, I, I just thought it was really cool. Yeah. yeah. When I was down there getting Aaron's autograph, you know, he came by and he said, he waved at me and said, Hey, how you doing? I said, you playing today? He's like, yeah. And then he asked me how I was doing. So, I mean, he's, he's a great guy, man. I mean, he seems like it. Yeah. It's like, and that's what I told his fiance. I said, you know, he interacted with us. He has fun with us. So we he has our support. You know, yeah. I mean, even if he got a hit against us, you know, we still yeah, want yeah. to cheer for him. I mean, hell, he pitched Avery pitched against him, you know, and if he got a hit yeah. off Avery, I mean, I'm going to yell Claudio's name. And I had to tell John, you know, the night, you know, Wednesday morning. What was going on? Well, I actually, I think I told him Tuesday night on the way home. I sent him a text message. I'm like, all right, here's the deal. <laughs> I said, he's just a cool guy. And we started this last year, and he happened to be here this year. So we're just going to cheer for him. So he's yep. like, oh, man, that is super cool. He's kind of like uh, Joe Davis. Yeah. For Greenville. You know, I, I told uh, I told Joe Davis uh, when he signed my bobblehead, I'm like, like dude, I can't tell you to have a good game because well, I'm pulling for the other team, but uh, have fun. And he just kind of right. laughed. I said, remember, have fun, but not a good game. Or I said, no, you can have a good time, just don't have a good game. <laughs> and he thought that was hilarious. So I kind of – he's another one of those players that, even though it's against us, I kind of pull for him every time he's out there. So I didn't catch any of that. Um, I'm sure it was a so, learning story. Well, I hope not. It's supposed to all go in the toilet. What? <laughs> just watch the watch the show and see what he said okay we're actually gonna view. i mean short clip it for me what's the what's the short version well so i think you got all your paperwork done yes everything Real came out right. yeah yeah it's all good so but we actually split the uh series with greensboro so mm -hmm. um it was it was a great series i mean it was I want to say evenly matched. I mean, there yeah, was no I mean, bad, the, no bad calls by the umpires. They actually did pretty damn decent. So, you mm -hmm. know, no complaints there. It was just, it was a good home. Three games that we lost. Yeah, the three games that we lost, we were in it right up till the end. Well, except yeah. for well, except for the one, two of the three Thursday, that we lost, we were in it. Thursday, we got beat one to seven to one. Yeah, but yeah. And one but night with we our had team, 13 strikeouts, and we still lost. Yeah, still lost. But with our team, as as way our offense is, seven to one isn't as big of a deficit as it sounds. I right. mean, was it this Friday we were we were down five to one and tied it up, came back to win. I think so. Yeah, and then in, I mean, you know this week in uh, Greenville. We we won every game but the first one, and all high. I and I think last night was the most runs I've ever seen scored. It was fifteen to fifteen to eleven. Yes, twenty six runs. I think I mean, the game that we went, one of the games we went to in Frisco, might there was one game in Frisco that had a really high score, and I think that might have been 
It was, but that that's it's either the first or second most runs we've ever seen in a game. I I couldn't tell you the score of any of any game that I've been to in Texas. It was well, just, I I um, filmed a couple of little vloggy bits when we were in Texas, and that is actually the lowest viewed uh, video on the channel. So y'all should go check that out. And uh, <laughs> one of those was uh, one of those little clips was me talking about how crazy the score was at, at, at the game that we had been at. And my alarm, but, my you guys just heard my alarm go off in the background, maybe. My mom's in here opening doors. But with us splitting the series last week and winning all the games but one this week, right now we are third in the South League with one game, one game back. first. Bowling Green's first, Rome, who we haven't played yet, and then it's us. So, Yep. I mean, think about that. I mean, we're in third place, only one game back. That is an extremely tight division. And nowhere near halfway. So, I mean, Second place in the northern division is like six games back. And um, do you guys want to talk about the big news that's coming while we're actually on the road? The three games that we're uh, Well, First, I'd like to talk a little bit more about Greenville. Okay. Like uh, Trevor Halber. Like up to up to the Greenville trip, he really hadn't done all that great this year. I mean, he's had a – he had like a 160-something batting average when we when they left Hickory to go to Greenville. And he's brought it up to – and let me, let me check it out here. Uh, I had it brought up. Hold on. And right now, his batting average is 237. I mean, in six games, he's brought it up to 237. That is, that is flat out balling. I mean, I, I love it. I love it when, when it gets to see a young player who's struggling just catch fire. You know, I mean, they've gone from, yeah, his defense is keeping him in the game to now they're having him DH. Because they don't want this bad out of the lineup. I love that. But anyway, I don't think I there's want. anybody that's sliding down, really. You know, I think we're all coming together and making and it work. Freeman, he's another one. Yeah. Cody Freeman's been lighting the world on fire with the bat here lately. He had a two run home run and a grand slam in the same game. I think it was. Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday night. I mean, yeah. Anyway, um, there was there was something in Greenville that you know it's it's very rare to see. Granted, it was against us, you know. So oh, yeah, it was a, a, a natural yeah. cycle. And for those of you yeah. who don't know, a natural cycle is even more rare than a regular cycle because a natural cycle you do everything in order. The first, the, the single, then the double, then the triple, and then the home run in that order. Yeah, I, can't I would pronounce like the to... guy's name, but stayed on. Rafael? Stayed on. Yeah, stayed on something. That was the first time stayed on because I used to, I used to make the joke when he came to Hickory. Like, Why are we saying Don? Don. Yeah. yeah that's it. But it is Corey Rafael. Jeff. Because I, when I see his name, I think about Rafael Devers, who played in Greenville. Yep. Yeah, he's – that's a name to watch out for. I think he'll be – he'll make and he's it fast major. as hell, too. That yeah. kid's got some wheels. <laughs> yes, he does. So when they come back to Hickory, if you, you might want to grab that guy's autograph. I'm just saying. Because he's yeah. going to the show. Sooner rather than later, he keeps playing the way, yeah. the way he is. Oh, also, um, speaking of autographs, there was a woman next to – or we went after the game to talk to our guys down by the uh, – Oh, yeah. The river? Pole over there in right field. Yeah. Um, all the Greenville Drive players were walking past, and, you know, they had just lost. And you all know, mm -hmm. we all know at least, after a loss that you don't really go ask – for autographs because they're not in the mood to sign autographs at that point. She was going, 
is anybody going to sign my ball? Is anybody going to sign my ball? Or at least acknowledge that I exist over here, like acting super offended that none of them were wanting to sign for, yeah. like taking it personal that none of them were wanting to sign for. And I was like, I, I, I told her, I said, well, they just lost. They, they probably don't want to sign uh, balls right now. And she goes, well, it's for my son. And I'm like, I know, but they, that's just not, after a loss like that, they're not really in the mood. Their coach might get their managers might get mad at them if they are out here signing after a loss. It's just not, they're probably just not going to do it. And then some of our crawdad players started walking by. And I don't know what this woman was thinking because it's very clear that this is two separate teams because one of them was wearing red and one of them was wearing black, which are very contrasting colors. She looks at me and goes, What about these guys? Are they winners or losers? And I was like, Well, obviously, they're a different, they're not the guys that they're wearing completely opposite outfits from the guys that just walked past us so unless there's three teams what game are you watching if they lost that means they won you can't have there's no ties in baseball so what i it, it was very oh, no no there was very a strange time. but then a bunch of crawdads players signed her ball so she went and gave her so she gave her son a, a ball that says greenville drive on it that was signed by a whole bunch of crawdad players and just a quick tip for anybody out there who is getting a ball autograph for their for their child, if at all possible, get the child to ask for the autograph because players will ignore 30 to 40 adults asking for autographs to get to that one kid asking for an autograph. And that's the way it should be. You know, I mean, obviously, if the kid can't be there or something like that, it, there, there's exceptions. But, you know, players love – to give autographs to the kids. They love to give them balls, broken bats, stuff like that. So if your kid wants stuff like that, have them ask for it. I mean, it'll be a great experience for the kid, and they're way more likely to get it than somebody that looks like me. Yes, and the funniest part, too, is like three or four players in a row would all stop and sign, and then one player would walk past without signing, and she's like, oh, well, I guess I'm just nothing over here. I'm like, well, you just like, what do you expect everybody to stop? That's not going to... Not, not even, that didn't even happen for us, and we're over here in all crawdad stuff. Yeah, and know several of them. Like yes. not you know, they know us by sight. Yes. Because we because we were ringing because at one point when um when when Luis on Hill got injured again or got roughed up a little bit, I, I hope he's not I hope it's not that bad. And it was just a he wasn't in the lineup tonight. Okay, well anyway, uh and then Franier came out to replace him at second. And we rung the cowbell when they announced his name, and he turned around and waved at us. So, yeah, they do know us. But yeah, he turned around like, hey. You can't hey, expect man. everybody. Like, be, you know, be grateful you got people to sign when you did. And also, Jeremy's right. The kid definitely would get um, – although I don't think the kid was there. But yeah, are these guys winners? Like, well, what have you been watching yeah, for the past three hours? <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, like, really? I don't know. I'm trying um, to find... Uh, I'm find something here. My phone's being screwy. And also, there was a fan there in the first inning. The first inning. So, we, <laughs> had, we had scored two in the top of the first, and then they came back and scored one in the bottom of the first. And then the guy was like, yeah, ring that cowbell now. Like super smug about it as if they – and first off, well, we're still winning. And second, yeah. it's the first inning. That is like eighth inning kind of talk right there. We like people, yeah. So many people <laughs> think that the first inning is, is – like, like there's still eight more innings of baseball left. Like what do you mean all smug about? Yeah, Chad had yeah, his and, cowbell. Yeah, and to be honest, yeah. That is so he, the, the – go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, Chad, he had his cowbell, and he wouldn't ring it real loud. And I turned around and said, if you're going to ring it, ring it. And I'm one of the Greenville's girlfriends was sitting in front of him. He's like, I'm not getting my butt jumped over here. And I'm like, then why'd you bring it? I said, I got you back. Yeah. And then somebody hit a home run, and he just started ringing it like crazy. He's like, is that good for you? And I was like, perfect. <laughs> oh, and what did you guys think about yeah. the home run that was hit by Greenville yesterday that hit off 
the top of the wall but didn't go over the batter's eye. And then they had to come out and talk about it. That was the that was where the guy said, Yeah, ring those cowbells now. And to be honest with you, I thought it was a home run. I also thought nope, it was I, a home run. I was surprised. I thought it should have been a tie ball game. Nope, it's got to go over the batter's eye. Or over, the wall. Go over the batter's eye, but if, if, if it hits the yeah, batter's eye. Over the batter's eye is like 300 yeah, it's, feet tall. It's just got to clear the wall. Oh, so is the green, the so is the monster. It bounced off the, no, it, the it, it bounced right off, like it bounced right off the lip of the wall and back in, which I think is a home run. I yeah. think it has to go over the batter's eye and so do. It doesn't have to go all the way over no. the wall because I've seen it hit. The batter's eye is not in play. Yeah, the batter's eye is out of play because the batter's eye is behind the fence. Yeah, behind the batter's the eye is just there to help the batter pick up that white ball against the blue sky. Yeah, so it just has to clear the fence. And sometimes it is behind the wall. If there's if the fence goes if there's like a yellow marker halfway down the fence, like at some stadiums, then that, that yellow marker is the is the home run. But yeah, so it at a stadium like that with such funky dimensions, you're gonna get something weird like that every now and then. But the good thing was it didn't really make a difference. You know, I mean, maybe you know, it would have tied the ball game at the time and maybe they would have had a better attitude, you know, been more pumped up, not quite as deflated. But yeah, 15 to 11, and it still only went like three hours and two minutes. So if that doesn't tell it you, it seemed like forever, play. though. I it seemed it. like it took forever. I mean, I, I enjoyed it too, but good God, it seemed like it was a long ass game. I'm starting to get used to these shorter paced games and enjoying them. I still oh. don't like the fact I still don't like the pitch clock and I don't like it being forced. That that I do not like. I am not a fan. See, that's of, my I'm not a fan of forcing it and I'm not a fan of timing things in baseball. But I have kind of enjoyed these shorter games at home, not on the road. But that's something that Jennifer and I we didn't talk about when we went to Gastonia because that league they don't have the pitch clock and that's when they just started enforcing it. Now that we have kind of gotten used to it, go to a game that doesn't enforce it and sit there and be like, oh, my God. There is – it's a huge difference. And especially, like I you know, uh, and I know I'm being selfish on my end. If I'm getting up at 4.30, I want to get home as soon as possible after the game. You know, and if it's a quick game, great, because I get a little bit of more beauty sleep that I need. But – you can tell a huge difference now in between the pitch clock and no pitch clock. Yeah, I've already noticed it watching major league games on TV. I some love of those, it. I just, some of those are just ponderous at this point. I still hate it. <laughs> you know, I, I, I agree. I'm kind of like Ethan. I don't mind it. If it's a short game. You know, I don't mind the game taking right around two hours. But I just hate that, that fourth feeling. You know, it just, yeah, it, I, I just don't like that. I mean, I like it better when, like, say, a, a say a, a pitcher gives up a home run in the first. I like for him to have enough time to step off the mound, take a deep breath, and go, okay, that's just one pitch. He got lucky. Now I'm I'm the baddest mf'er on this field. I'm going to step up here and I'm going to show them what I got. But now That's what John like, done the other night. Well, yeah, but – and some people can do that in that short period yeah. of time. But Well, you know, maybe – like, oh, oh, crap, I got to get back on the mound. If we're looking for – if we're looking for some kind of compromise, like let's say hypothetically this world ex- – in a perfect world, there'd be no pitch clock at all. Well, let's say hypothetically they're saying, okay, there has to be a pitch clock no matter what. The compromise I would go with, for what you just said is okay so then immediately after a scoring play make the next pitch a little bit longer than the than the, than, than all the other ones maybe you know put a longer timer on that but still i i just i would rather see no timer at all but if if we have to have one then i would say compromise by making it a little bit longer after a, after a scoring uh scoring play yeah i was i, I was kind of hoping when they were talking about all this they were. They had two options on the table. They had what we have now, which is what fifteen seconds, unless there's a runner on, and then it's eighteen seconds. Uh, they were talking about possibly doing twenty seconds with nobody on, and twenty-five or possibly thirty seconds if there were runners. If 
with 25 seconds if there was one runner on, 30 seconds if there were two runners on. Yeah, which, which to me, I thought that would still speed up the game, but it wouldn't make everything feel quite so rushed. That's fair. So, I guess it's almost that time for some promotions. Ethan wants to Unless you are the in the bathroom. I don't know. Or as, or as I like to call them, things we're probably not going to do. Well, before... I guess we could go that, but I want to do this real quick. Uh, there was an email sent out this week about the crawdads. When we're away next month, there'll be three dates that oh yes, there's going to be baseball at the stadium, but it's the All American Amateur Baseball Association. And the I love team, the name of the team. The love team it. that's going to be the home team usually play mm -hmm. in Winston-Salem at the, at the ballpark in Winston-Salem, but they're going to be the home team here, and they're called the Disco Turkeys. I like that. Disco Turkeys. Love it. And I love their logo. It's yeah. a turkey hope, wearing a leisure suit. Doing the, and I hope they it. bring merchandise and we can Me buy too. merch. I hope. But um, on the second of next month, and all the game and all three games are going to be at 6 30. They're going to play the Kingsmen. I don't know where, who, whatever. And the ninth and 23rd, they're playing the Boone Bigfoots. So, and those two, uh, Bigfoot? those two games, Bigfoot. Big eh. It's Boone. Those two Bigfoot. games are, it's a rivalry type game, and it's called, and it's a battle for the Turkey Foot. Cup. Uh, uh, I love it. I um, love you can it. go ahead and buy your tickets now. They're five dollars, or the day of the games, they'll be six dollars. So go out there and support these guys. I mean, if you're going to support anybody, definitely support you know amateur baseball players because I don't know what happens with them. But if it's kind of like independent ball, they could get picked up by somebody. But you know, support these guys. These guys are. I think these guys are also still in college. Yeah, it's like a wood bat yeah. summer or college yeah. thing. Yeah. Summer it's wood also bat. Wood bat. Yeah. Yeah. Like right, the go over like Oilers. That'll be yeah. next month. Um, we'll, we'll, we might do a show before then, so we'll remind you. But I don't know. So we'll see. But on to the, the thing that we're probably not going to do this week. Um, so the 24th, which is – Tuesday is actually going to be a double header to make up for a rain delay in Winston-Salem because the Winston-Salem hyphens are coming to town. Um, the game's going to start at five, the first game, and it's, you know, dollar, dollar dog Tuesday with uh, two dollar drafts or whatnot. So the game will be at five and it'll be a 30 minute interval between the second game. And I don't think it's going to start any later than seven. So won't start any earlier than seven. Yeah. And Wednesday, the game will be at six. And do you know about this promotion, Jeremy? Mm -mm. It's, it's going to be your look night. At any okay. promotions. So it's, you're going to be excited about this one. Um, it's Until homage, homage to trains. Oh, I will love trains. that. Trains are <laughs> I remember. Nice. I remember seeing that on the schedule, and I was like, I'm not complaining because I love trains, and I'm looking forward to it. But like, but you're going to complain because they're not going to do jack shit with trains. Oh, yeah. They'll have, like, a trivia, three-question trivia thing between games or between innings, and that'll be it. And they'll have movie trivia uh, with movies that exactly. have to do with trains. So, yeah. and let's and go ahead so and say it now. Finish the lyric with songs about trains. What movies I don't think are they going to show? Far. What? What movies do you think they'll show? Polar Express. Polar Express, yep. Um, I can't think of that many movies based around trains. Well, I can think of a bunch, but most of them are older. Like Pelham 123, or the, the taking of Pelham 123, where the guy hijacks a, a train. Um, there was uh, Silver Streak with uh, Richard Pryor and... Uh, Oh, what's his name? Uh, 
killed a rabbit. Yeah, but but, but remember, it wow. doesn't have to be the whole movie about trains. It could just be a scene from a movie that has a train yeah. in it. Like in Tombstone, when, they, when they're all getting off the train there, that could be in it. Could be. That was a great scene. You tell them I'm coming. And hell's coming with me. <laughs> I was thinking at, in the beginning of the movie when they're first getting off. Oh, the train, yeah. yeah because that's a little bit more, the, that, that other one might not really be for the kids, you know. <laughs> which the guy the children. The horse. Yeah. yeah. For the kids. Uh, the <laughs> opening of Toy Story 3 uh, when he's playing with the trains. Uh, yeah. But that's too future obvious. Future. Yeah, they, they really should try to make them a little more difficult. I mean, they're going to give them the prize anyway, whether they get it right or not. So make them a little more obscure. Not like super obscure, but, you know. And if they don't play the song Train Train by Blackfoot, I, I will be quite upset. I agree. And if they need to play like Midnight Train to Georgia. Yes. Long Maybe Black not Black. during the game. But... Love yeah, Train by OJ. That's another yeah. one. Oh, Love Train would be a great one to play during the game. During the yeah, seventh I, inning. I, I, I hope I have a Coors Light in my hand when they play Love Train because that, that was the, the commercial for years. Yep. And they crack open the, the the Coors Light and then, like, whatever setting they were in, turn train would come through the, the ice. The train going through, yeah. And it's also Wine Wednesday and Kids Win Wednesday. Yay. Um, Thursday is an 11 o'clock game. It's for an education day. And senior day, so, you know, we've made that joke before. All the young and old come together as one. Put the young ones in the sun and the old ones in the shade. Yeah. Um, and I'll be there Friday, in the middle. Friday, the game will be at 7. Of course, it's fireworks. And it's also Deep Town Night. The first 500 people oh. come through the gates, you get a Demon Deacons T-shirt. Those are actually pretty cool T-shirts. Even though I'm not a, I'm not a Deacons fan, but I, I do like that they do that because it gives Ethan some pajama shirts. Well, as, as long as it's not Duke, it doesn't matter who it is. <laughs> and Saturday <laughs> um, is our Memorial Day tribute, and we're giving away Saturday one. Yeah. What about Sunday? I'll be at the race Sunday, um, so it won't matter. But what? But what about Sunday? It's. It's going to be Sunday. Hold hold your horses there, buddy. Okay. Um, Saturday's Memorial Tribute. The first thousand fans will get a military themed giveaway jersey. So definitely going to get me one. Or you can pay your extra thirty dollars. Anyway, not going there. Um, Sunday, the game's at three. It's Church Bulletin Sunday, and it's a continuation of Memorial Day weekend. So um, I think I'm going to bring out the thirteen flags again and hang them up. But yeah, that's your promotions for the week. Um, the only wet, the only letdown is actually going to be they're not going to talk about trains and they're going to do something cheesy for Memorial Day. Well, at least they do but something they for Memorial. Yeah, but they, they all are going to wear. Anymore. They are going to wear the awesome camouflage hats. To, uh, it's not the new. That was last year's. Yeah, I read it last year. I need to get the new one. That new one is amazing. Of course, I'll this one's it. still one of my favorite hats. I mean, you got the still got the South, the old South Atlantic League on there because they were going to give these out in 20, or not give them out, but sell them in 2020. It didn't happen. I like the new ones because it has the five stars and it says Hickory on it. Yes. I, I like wore that. mine yesterday because it was supposed to be the military game for Greenville and they didn't do it. But they posted like they were going to wear theirs. I'm, like, I'm going to wear mine. Because I got, I got a feeling the team may have had something to do with that. Because, yeah. like, we were only supposed to wear our black jerseys like twice this year, and they've yeah, already worn them. Like, the, uh, yeah, and those are awesome jerseys too. Yeah, those are great. That's why they're wearing them. Because <laughs> the team's like these jerseys are way too nice not to wear. Right. So yeah, get out here and. Support the dads and see if the cafe actually does what they say they're going to do. Mm -hmm. We'll be yeah. there. And, well, it's supposed to rain all flipping weekend, all week. So yeah, if you can get out, get out. Yeah. 
you know, I guess that's it for me. I'm done. Yeah, that's all I got. I mean, uh, Jeremy? That's all I got except for uh, putting in a quick plug for my candles. Go go to moosecandlecompany.square.site and buy some candles or follow me on Facebook. I'll I'll put on there when I'm going to be out selling them. Yeah, I come right. prepared. I mean, just, well, with all that you. being said, thank you very much for watching another episode of the Dirty Balls podcast. I am your host, and I am miserable and waiting for this to end because I don't have any AC in my house right now, and I got like four fans going, and it still feels terrible in here, and I got this light shining on me. I'm about done. Also, I'm going to go chug a bunch of bottled water and uh, – and uh yeah so, so what was that what was that long story you were wanting to talk about jeremy huh that super long that super long thing that we were talking about i'm just not messing with ethan yeah that's what i thought so thank you everybody ethan, ethan said something about a story the other day though yeah, yeah well again we'll get to that eventually i want to tell it in person and don't worry we will but until then thank you for watching don't stop believing. come out Support your crawdads. <laughs> Don't pay too much for vintage clothes, no matter how cool they are. Peace. Deuces. Get